Uh, this comedian, folks, is a dear, dear friend of mine, and I love her. She was on last year's Salute to the Troops, and now the Iraq War is over. Coincidence? You tell me. <laughs> Either way, I brought her back because she cracks me up, and here she comes right now, folks. Let her hear you feel the love, Kathleen Madigan. Nashville. I am originally from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Well, thank you. I'll take that. I just spent uh, two weeks with my parents, who are getting much older, and uh, I went to their house, and unbeknownst to me, they had changed all the light bulbs in the house into those energy-saving light bulbs. So I walk in, and they're sitting in this really weird, dim lighting, and I was like, hey, guys, we, uh, we having a seance? <laughs> My dad goes, no, we're not. Your mother thought it would be a good idea, Kathleen, at our age, when our eyesight is failing, to make the house as dimly lit as possible, Kathleen. <laughs> because she's upset, because Al Gore's upset, because there aren't any more polar bears. Well, you know what? I'm 70 years old. I don't give a shit if I ever see a polar bear, Kathleen. <laughs> What I'd like to see is the coffee table. That's what I'd like to see. Wow, it's gonna be a long two weeks. Most of the time now, they just sit on the couch and go like this and go, how do you think we would look with facelifts? <laughs> What's weird is they're so old, when they let go, it stays like that. I'm like, just do that before you go out. It looks awesome. St. Louis is not a healthy city. It is a city built on beer and burgers and cigs, and that's what I prefer. We are so unhealthy. My little sister moved to Seattle, and when she got there, she saw everyone on bicycles, and she just assumed they'd all gotten DUIs. <laughs> she was horrified. I'm like, we can't even fathom riding a bicycle without a court order. It's like, what? A lot of vegetarians in Los Angeles, I am not. And they always have to say something, which is what bothers me. Like, I don't say anything when they order their bowl of dirt or whatever is they're eating. I say nothing. It's none of my business, but they always make a comment. Ooh, a steak? Really, Kathleen? Can I have a steak? Yeah, yep. I might have a hot dog for dessert. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and then they always want to ruin that. Ooh, a hot dog. Do you know what's in a hot dog? Shh, shh, shh. No, I don't. Shut, shut, shut up, shut up. I don't care if my own dog's in a hot dog. That's how much I love hot dogs. <laughs> and then they always try the emotional route. Ooh, I don't know, Kathleen. I don't think it's nice. I don't think God meant for us to eat cows. Well, then I think he should have made them harder to catch. <laughs> You don't see anybody eating cheetah burgers, do you? No! They could be delicious, but at 60 miles an hour, who has the energy to deal with that? A cheetah farm would be unmanageable. It's ridiculous. I'm just not healthy. I go to the gym, I don't wanna go, and I switch gyms, and the young girl that signs you up, she's all happy and excited. She's like, okay, Kathleen, so what are your goals for this year? I'm like, I, I don't have any goals. I am not here for offense. I am here for defense only. She goes, well, we have to write something. I go, okay, write this. I am here to delay the date and severity of my impending stroke. She was like, uh, we won't write that. That's not happy. This is a happy place, Kathleen. No, it's not fun to me. No, it's not. A bar is fun. That's fun. A gym, not fun. I've never stayed so long at a gym that I got kicked out. That has never, ever happened. I I've never worked out so hard that somebody had to take my keys because I was crazy. <laughs> No, I'm gonna leave this gym and go smoke a cigarette. It's just trying to offset stuff. <laughs> Smoking's not good in Los Angeles. Oh, people are so mean. I got yelled at smoking in an alley. I was in an alley with two homeless guys and a man in a trash can. That, <laughs> these were my new three BFFs for the next eight minutes. 
<laughs> one guy was clearly schizophrenic, but what was alarming is he kept yelling out random things, and the things he yelled out, not only did I agree with, I got excited about. <laughs> Weird stuff. Grape soda is delicious and nobody thinks to buy it anymore. <laughs> He's totally right. I love grape soda. And I, just, I know smoking's not good. And I love it when people who have never been addicted to something try to tell an addict how to quit something. Because they mean well, but they're usually so far off the mark. My friend Shay, Kathleen, that smoking's terrible. You should try yoga. <laughs> But I'm open-minded. Well, then I went and got the yoga pants, and those were so comfortable, I never left the house. I was like, oh, my God. What are these made of, a baby's ass? How is this legal? Why are these $8 at Marshall's? All of my clothes should be made out of this. I am going to lay here and smoke every cigarette in this house in these pants. I know I'm lazy. I feel even lazier when I turn on the news. Like every time you turn on the news, there's protesters somewhere, right? And I look at them and I go, look at those people. Look at all the energy they have. All I know is that I am not yet angry enough about anything to camp. <laughs> if you're gonna have a little something at the Radisson around five, give me a holler. Maybe I'll show up. If you have white wine, I'll sign you and give you money. I know myself. <laughs> Obama makes me feel lethargic and lazy because every time I turn on the TV and see him speaking, he's going, America, I'm going to need your help on this. I'm like, dude, we are busy and <laughs> okay? <laughs> the ticket didn't say Obama mad again. It said Obama Biden. So if you need some help, you go get that drunk, smiling Irishman out of a bar. <laughs> Tell him chop, chop. I think Obama overestimates the knowledge of the general public because I even watch politics and I, I don't know what he's talking about half the time. Uh, a few months ago, he's like, if you agree with this policy, I'm going to need you to email your congressmen and representatives. I'm like, well, then I'm going to need you to email me who they are. <laughs> And if you could include a link and a click box, you will greatly improve your chances of me helping you out with this little task. <laughs> but I think, like, maybe I'm depressed or something. Like, all these politicians, when they give their speeches, all of them, Republicans and Democrats, all of them at some point will go, America is a place where your dreams can come true. And I think, oh my God, clearly these people have never taken an Ambien and drank a half a bottle of wine. <laughs> I do not want my dreams to come true, sir. <laughs> Last week I was in Alaska wearing a sombrero and it was raining Cheetos and I couldn't find my mouth. And that went on <laughs> for an hour and a half. It was exhausting. Illegal immigration, why are we still talking about it? Nothing changes, nothing. And in one of the Republican debates recently, seven out of nine people on the stage said that they would send all, 11 million of them, back to Mexico. And the moderator just kept on with the questions. And I'm like, no, back up. How are you going to do that? You, how are we going to transport 11 million people back to Mexico? And then I actually had a really good idea. I was like, wait a minute, I think I have the answer. My parents are retired and they love to drive. <laughs> and they need prescription medicine at bottom basement prices, and that's what Mexico has to offer. So, five at a time in the back of Jack and Vicky's Cadillac. That's how we start. Because I guarantee you, after spending 30, 30 hours in the back seat of my parents' car, those Mexicans will never, ever return to this country. That's how awful it would be. And the other thing I never understand, I don't understand why we're still talking about it, is guns. What kind of regulations are we going to have? None. None. And I'm from the Midwest. I'm fine with guns. Everybody in my family has a gun. But, like, machine guns? Like, that always seems a bit crazy to me. And my Missouri friends will defend it. Kathleen, machine guns are fine. It is not guns that kill people, Kathleen. It is people that kill people. 
I know, but machine guns kill an ass load more people. How hard is this to gather? Can we just limit the carnage at the mall? That's all I'm asking. Because the lesser the weapon, the fewer people will die. That's just a fact. I mean, let's take it to the most basic argument. Let's say I walked into Walmart with a tomahawk. <laughs> I could probably get the greeter, right? Because <laughs> they're old and they don't know. But that would be the end of my spree. Someone would stop me. It wouldn't even be a spree. It would just be a weird story in the paper on page eight. Short lady goes into Walmart with outdated weapon, hits Bob. He'll be back at work on Thursday. Weird scar, don't stare. All right, you guys, I gotta go. Thank you so much for laughing. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you to all the troops. We appreciate everything.